Okay. So some larger chunks are okay, but. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh my, oh my God. This thing. <laughs> this thing. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have a very special guest, pastry chef Natasha Pickowitz, and she is going to walk me through all the steps to making a delicious savory scone that has zucchini and herbs and cheese. And I'm very excited because I have a complicated relationship with scones and I'm really excited to watch an expert make a really good version. Thanks for coming. I'm so happy to be here. Oh my god, this is a little, we're in a little bit of a tight space. This is kind of a one person kitchen. But you're gonna show us scone recipe. Mm -hmm. My association with scones are like coffee shop scones that have been sitting out yes. for a really long time and they're like not good. Well, there's so many ways that a scone can sort of go awry. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's too much baking powder, it can taste really chalky. If there isn't enough fat in it, it can just feel really dry and kind of leaden. In every restaurant that I've ever worked at, I've there's always been a scone. So mm -hmm. I feel like I've had a lot of opportunities to sort of refine my technique, hopefully one that, that you love. <laughs> I am a pastry chef, but I actually have a very savory palate. And so mm -hmm. I really gravitate towards savory pastries that, you know, have cheese and vegetables and herbs in them. Zucchini is something that you can get year round. Mm -hmm. So we're buying cases of zucchini, we're adding a salty, melty cheese like Gruyere or Comte mm -hmm. or cheddar, and then you're kind of brightening everything up with whatever herbs you have around. So here mm -hmm. we have rosemary and thyme. So I love that you have everything mised and scaled out in advance. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is what I like to call <laughs> setting yourself up for success. Uh -huh. This is something that I do too. Everything is separate. So, you know, basic things for a scone, all-purpose flour, baking powder, sugar, some kosher salt, black pepper, zucchini, buttermilk, cubed unsalted mm -hmm. butter, and the Gruyere and herbs. Mm -hmm. And that's everything. I have made this scone completely from start to finish with just my hands. Stand mixer kind of expedites incorporating butter into the dry mixture, so handy if you have mm -hmm. it. I don't even have a stand mixer at home, so you could like pinch the butter in yeah. or grate it so that it's like a fine shred. All this kind of style of pastry, I've always done it by hand, so I'm actually excited to see it come together with the paddle in the mixer because totally. I've never done it that way. The basic process is dry ingredients, mm -hmm. and then we add in cold fat, the cold butter, and then we'll add in a cold liquid to sort of bring it all together. Okay. But because we're gonna grate this zucchini, I think we should do that first, and then that'll give it time to sort of release some moisture before we add it back into the mix. Okay. Should we stick these in the fridge just for now? Do so we'll keep all of our cold ingredients cold, and in okay. a pinch, I'll put these things in a freezer too, yeah. just to keep them extra cold. Yeah, we'll see um, if we can find a space in there, because. Okay. It's a little. It's like okay. vertical living in that. Okay. Uh, yes. Fridge. <laughs> this here. This is a new box creator because I broke my other one. It's it looks like, sharp. It's so sharp. <laughs> so I love it. Gotta watch your knuckles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I always like will grate right into a bowl because mm -hmm. then you're not like picking up flecks of mess on your counter. Right. It's all kind of like contained right in there. You could use a mix of like zucchini and yellow squash, patty mm. pan, like all of the smaller squashes have are like less moisture. Right. Once you know the amounts of everything that you need, that's when you can start substituting things that sort of work the same way in the oven. Right, right. Yeah. It looks like a lot, but you'll see. Once we yeah. sort of take all the water out, it's gonna be like a cup of zucchini. Please dice this cheese. Okay. This like beautiful looking okay. alpine cheese. And I Mark. and I say like you can't go wrong with adding more cheese. Mm. And if you wanted to, you could also process that on the box grater, but mm. I love cutting it into little cubes because when the scone bakes, the cheese will kind of melt out around yeah. the edges. Yeah, like that little puddle off the, to the side. Exactly, so you get these kind of like crispy cheese bits, and I think that's like really important for the enjoyment of right. this pastry. We'll do a centimeter sized okay. dice. I love the way that you're doing this. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if this happens to you as a pastry chef. Probably not. But I feel like I have one knife that I use and it's like not that sharp. And it's this one. And it's not really that good for chopping anything, but I just am like I'm just committed to it. Do you have band-aids here don't. also? 
I know, don't look too closely at what's happening over here. But this is perfect. Yeah, little okay. batons and then, you know, the other direction. And then we'll have all of our little cheese cubes. So, you know, you can mix all the ingredients separately in a bowl and whisk them together. But why would you do that when you could have the stand mixer do the work for you? So this is just all-purpose flour. Sugar helps tenderize the scone when it's baking in the oven. So we'll just add that on top. Granulated sugar, a teaspoon of salt. We're also incorporating salt through the cheese, so you can kind of pull back a little bit on this if you want to. And then baking powder. I think you gave me a sifter, which is great. Mm -hmm. I only really sift leaveners if it's like really humid and things feel really clumpy. Um, otherwise, I just kind of feel like it's an extra step. Right. I'm always surprised when I'm making biscuits or shortcakes, like, like wow, that's a lot of baking powder. Right. But it needs it, yeah. It, it really does. I love adding black pepper into scones too, just to give a little bit of extra heat and spice. Mm -hmm. So maybe like half a teaspoon of black pepper. Little dried herbs like this that mm -hmm. aren't like overly wet, I yeah. think we can add right in with the dry oh, mixture okay. too. If you're gonna use rosemary, maybe we'll run a knife through this. Okay. But with thyme, just the leaves. I'll just boop like that. Yeah. But if you're using like a more tender, fresh herb mm -hmm. like basil or lemon verbena or mint, I would go more because right. it takes more to kind of get that flavor across. Right. But these like drier herbs, I think a little bit kind of goes a long way. Yeah. Once we turn the mixture out onto the bench, mm -hmm. we can also kind of make some last minute decisions like, oh, you want to visually see more pepper? We can grind it right in. Mm -hmm. So this is just preliminary. Okay, cool. Let's get this mixture paddling at, I think, low speed to okay. just kind of this come is together. The just until it looks combined. Okay. So maybe a few more seconds. Okay. And then I'll grab the butter. Okay. You want butter that is sort of cubed evenly, it feels cold to the touch, mm -hmm. but probably not frozen because mm -hmm. this paddle. It needs to be able to flatten. We need a to, bit. yeah, we're going to kind of like take this to about like a quarter of this size and a stand mixer instead of like smearing it will kind of like break it up into smaller pebbles. Got it. I feel like people are used to, and by people I am possibly talking about just myself, like the idea of the paddle is something where it's like, oh, you just think about creaming ingredients, but really it's there to break up in this totally. case. So periodically I'll just like go in and I'll just put my hand in there okay. and just see what it feels like. Okay. So some larger chunks are okay, but. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god, this thing, <laughs> this thing. It's like, I mean, it's starting to break down, but it's totally. like some big pieces. Yeah, like so we'll that, give it like, like that's like, is this what we're looking for as totally. far as piece size? I'd okay. say we're like halfway there. Yeah. So you're feeling for size of the butter, but also sort of the flour, is the flour starting to, oh my god, sorry, this makes her. Claire, get it together. I know, I know, I blame, <laughs> I blame the machine. So it's like, it's starting to, like this piece has been a little flattened. This is great, exactly. We'll add the buttermilk now. Okay. And what I like to do is add the buttermilk while the mixer is on, so mm -hmm. we'll do the lowest speed. Okay. You always want to err on the side of like less being more effective, okay. and that we can always add more by hand later. Mm -hmm. So even though you have a cup scaled out, let's just add half, yeah. and then we can like talk about what that looks like. Right. So you can always add more liquid if you it's, you can't take a liquid away. You once, can't take it back. It. So we're gonna add half, and then now turn the mixer off. Great. Oh wow, so that's it. I think for that's now. it, because okay. also the zucchini is gonna add moisture. We okay. have a little bit more to work with if we want. Is it done in the mixer at this point? We're done with the mixer. Oh wow, okay. We're gonna do everything else by hand. Use the bowl scraper and I'll kind of just flick it off this. Mm -hmm. Just get it all off of there. Also, like if any passages of the dough look gummy or feel stretchy, then mm -hmm. it's been overworked. You can always throw that little piece away. Interesting. Yeah, it's okay. like don't bother incorporating it in. It's just gonna like add to a denseness. So it's not that it's just hydrated. It's like that is the gumminess is a sign of overworking. being overworked. You can see how it's there's so much flour that mm -hmm. doesn't have and things that are sort of stubbornly clinging to the inside. Uh -huh. I won't scrape it out cleanly. Okay. okay so what you want to do is I call it um, salad tong hands. Okay. Uh huh. So instead of actively gripping things, you're mm -hmm. kind of letting things fall through your right, fingers. Right. Like using the lightest touch you can imagine. Uh -huh. So just like run, start kind of like okay. running your fingers through it. You're kind of breaking up these larger curds right. and sort of adding the dry flour back into it. Right. So we're trying to even out the distribution of the liquid. That's right. What you're looking for texturally 
is sort of a wet wool sweater. Mm. You kind of want I it to feel that. furry, okay. but also a little bit damp. So if it's okay. overly wet, then it's gonna bake up into a mess. If it's mm -hmm. overly dry, it's gonna be impossible to roll out. So this feels great, Okay. Um, but it's definitely underhydrated. Like if you tried to roll this out now, it would be right. you know, a mess. Right. So I think we'll look at our zucchini now before okay. we add it in. Any green that I want to incorporate into a pastry, mm -hmm. I'll blanch or process in some way, like shred, and uh -huh. then work out as much of the water as uh -huh. possible. So like just, a little handful. Yeah, just do like a little bit at a time, and then it really like wants to shrink down. This green goo, you know, you can try drinking it, but <laughs> it's basically water, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that if you can reintroduce that moisture, with something with tons of flavor yeah. and fat, right. like buttermilk, like butter, mm -hmm. like cheese. These are things that are gonna right. you know, bring right. it back to right. even keel. Okay, I feel like that looks great. Okay. It looks like a lot, but this is what we want for the scone, is okay. for it to be like a truly generous amount. We need to add the zucchini and the cheese, right? Okay. So what I'll do is kind of spread this mixture out, and we're just okay. gonna like sprinkle it right on top. This is a really good way also for me to see what I call like the problem areas. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. like you can see that this is so underhydrated, that's sort of like a problem area. So we'll kind of spread it out, and then go ahead and add all the zucchini. Okay. Just, just sprinkle it on top. Okay. In the center or just everywhere? Just all over on top, okay. and then we're gonna salad tong hands it back together. Okay, so then you can see like how much liquid the zucchini is adding and then how much you have to compensate with yeah. buttermilk, and we, you would not wanna fully hydrate it before this step because you're adding all this moisture. Exactly, so, and also by hand instead of on in the stand mixer too. Right. So if you wanted to add more herbs here, if you wanted to add more black pepper, mm -hmm. chili flake, whatever, this would be the time. If your hands were spatula and you were like mm -hmm. folding whipped cream or something, mm -hmm. just kind of bringing it up and over, like uh -huh. just kind of folding it in. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So what's happening now is the dry problem areas are actually coating all the zucchini pieces too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you're kind of hydrating the flour and you're sort of like protecting the zucchini. This feels good to me. Okay. okay. At this point, I want to like handle it as little as possible. So mm -hmm. I'll just do like one more quick pass, mm -hmm. see that the problem areas are kind of eliminated. So what I want you to do is kind of, are you right-handed? I'm left-handed. Me too. Really? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've you don't have to switch the instructions then. It's never That's happened amazing. to me. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll use my left hand to hold the bench scraper to uh -huh. build the scone into a wall uh -huh. and then press it down mm -hmm. with this hand. So like, and so are we're, and we're doing something like rectangular or squarish in shape, right? Exactly. Okay. Because I think, I mean, if you want to punch circles out with your scones, amazing, but it's going to yield scraps. Yeah. So what I actually like to do is use a knife mm -hmm. or a rectangular cookie or biscuit cutter uh -huh. and then you have no scrap. So yes. it's kind of yes. like ideal. I, which I prefer also. I'll get all my little bits. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. once I have it, this and then I'll support my wall and then uh -huh. press it down. I like, got it. Okay. And that's sort of the final motion to bring it all together too. Okay. Yeah. Great. And see how it feels now wet? Yes. So it's like yes, that happened. Right. Great. I think that's good. Okay. So like what I'll do is I'll throw just a little bit of extra flour and mm -hmm. we're not even going to roll the scone. Okay. So just press the scone slightly down. Okay. Because if you try to roll it out, it might exactly. Yep. Okay. And that actually kind of is going to bring the dough together. Yes, even this is more. kind of like slightly compacting it, evening out the thickness. Looks great, and like also that. so so pretty. So pretty. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So okay. I mean, maybe like if I were really maybe being... reinforce those edges a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, just so that like a corner piece doesn't fall apart. Yeah. Okay. And so this is in order to. I think what? that the cheese, if it melts out, might stick to the parchment. Ah. So just to make it them easier to remove. So I think just do like a tic-tac-toe okay. and then kind of carefully transfer okay. the scones over to the baking sheet. Oh yeah, these are gonna be huge. <laughs> I did not cut that evenly at all. It looks great. Another great use for a bench scraper. It's like a spatula. The perfect lifter. Mm -hmm. I just love how you can see the zucchini in there. It's yeah. not like hidden. With the leftover buttermilk, egg white adds shine mm -hmm. and egg yolks will add kind of deepen color. Uh -huh. But I think just buttermilk. <laughs> and then I think maybe like big pinch of flaky salt mm -hmm. on top and mm -hmm. like more black pepper, Little pepper for visual interest. Yeah, here, you do the pepper, I'll do the salt. Okay, great. This one. 
No, this way. <laughs> and you can always add more on after, but it might not like adhere properly. Right. The surface of the scone feels cold, so I yeah. think we can just put it right okay. in the oven. All right. But Fantastic. if you're not sure, let it chill and then put them in. Okay, so it's at 400 now, or it's coming up to 400. Totally. Since these are in the oven, on that note, do you want to tell us about your pop up? Oh, sure. So I have this pop up called Never Ending Taste. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of other people in the fine dining industry, a lot of pastry people, like I lost my job. Um, and But I wanted to keep baking, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep sharing things with people and, you know, playing around with delicious ingredients. Yeah. The pop up has been so fun because I'm like actually making everything that we're selling. Uh -huh. And I think, you know, when I was managing pastry teams of, you know, five, six, seven people, like they're actually the ones that are, you know, spinning ice cream and ma scooping cookies yeah. and making the tarts. Like I kind of have to manage them. So you sort of miss that hands-on joy, which is why yeah. anyone begins baking, of actually making something from start to finish right. and then seeing it come out and be delicious. Right. So are these going in the freezer? Yeah, we can put those in the freezer. I love that you did this, uh -huh. but I normally oh. I would probably wait. Yeah, to that's brush true. I wouldn't. Yeah, the topping on mm, until so. you're the moment you're ready to bake. True. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a performative going into the yeah. freezer. Oh, let's see how. Here, I, huh. I see. Here, let, I see a move. Let me. This is Claire. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this I'll eat later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> so Very how sad. long has it been? Like no half idea. an hour? Sounds good. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> These are also big scones. So mm. obviously if you cut portion them smaller, you'll cut down on your baking time. Right. But I think, yeah. Yeah, they look good? Yeah, let's pull them. Okay. So we did, we didn't, we never dropped the temp. It's been 400 the whole time. That's right. Wow. So they're like so beautifully browned. Uh -huh. It should kind of spring back. Uh huh. Right? Because if you did like a skewer test, I feel like if you hit a wet passage that's zucchini, it might uh -huh. not be accurate, uh -huh. although you can do that too. And then you see these mm. delectable a little like, um, frico. Yeah, frico, mm -hmm. frico puddles. Yeah. I love like you get this yeah. little lacy bonus edge. I'm gonna pull, this piece yeah. looks like it really wants to be pulled off. Mm -hmm. I'm pull that off. Mm. Mm. It kind of convinces me that there should be like a graded something for hydration in like all scones. I it's mean, like also like getting away, it's physically blocking like gluten development, you mm -hmm. know, so it's like tenderizing plus adding moisture. Yeah. Wow. And these are so fresh. They're like hot they're so moist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The zucchini is tender. So it's like, you're not encountering it as a, like as a chewy or toothsome addition, but it's sort of just like melting into everything. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. This is really, I feel like, has answered a lot of my questions about scones and why often they're really bad. Wow. Yeah, truly. I, that makes me really happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. When you suggested this as a recipe, I was like, that was perfect. Great, I'm so mm -hmm. glad that you mm -hmm. haven't covered this topic yet. But I imagine what dessert people would be as a series, like a little mini series on the channel. This is exactly what I pictured because I was just like, I really crave and have, up to this point, I've had like limited ability to learn from other mm. professionals. And I feel like sometimes you're like in a, your own bubble being like, am I doing this right? Now I feel like I understand scones a lot better. So glad you came over. Thank you so much. Thank you for having They're me. They're so, so tasty. So much fun, yeah. We should do it again. Great. Okay. Thanks, right. Claire. Thank you. Uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> That's how I finish every video. I know you're on Instagram as Natasha Pickowitz. Right, so find me on Instagram. That's where I'm posting about um, pop-ups I'm doing, other projects I'm working with, with different like nonprofits, writing that I'm publishing. Yeah, it's probably your best go-to. Okay, cool. Check it out. Good.